this is Lady Boulay and I hope your day is going beautifully. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for your thumbs up, for your comments, and thank you for sharing the videos. Thank you for all you do to support the channel. Well, by now, I'm sure you've heard that Queen Elizabeth II has transitioned into eternity. And in the coming weeks and months, probably, we will be hearing a lot about what a great lady she was. We'll hear about her 70-year reign as Queen of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth. We will hear a lot about the service that she rendered to her people. The commitment that she made as a very young woman to dedicate her life as a life of service to the empire that her family had established. All of that sounds really good. It sounds like a queen who really cared about her people, who put her people first, and that her people were really her first priority. What we won't hear about is the damage that she and the dynasty that she represented has done to the world, including Africa and African Americans. She lived for 96 years a very privileged life, a life of comfort, a life of ease, a life in which she had some power and a lot of influence. But what African Americans need to know is that Africa and African Americans have been very instrumental in that wonderful life that she led that it was the pillage of the continent of Africa and the exploitation of African people that allowed her to gather the influence and the money, and I mean real serious money, that she got through the pillaging, the robbery, and the destruction of Africa. And when I said destruction, I mean destruction because we were a part of that destruction Beginning with her ancestor, Queen Elizabeth I, Africa has not seen a break. They have wreaked havoc on West Africa, South Africa, East Africa, and some parts of North Africa. The capturing of African people, the enslavement of African people, and then fanning them out all over the world to work for the British Empire. And when slavery ended, going into Africa and colonizing those countries and stealing their resources. And I don't even know if there's a prettier way to say it. The United States of America began as a colony of the British Empire. That means that all of the enslaved people that came to America came under the authority ship of the British king or queen. That would have been Queen Elizabeth II's ancestors because it went on for hundreds of years. And according to some historians, racism began with the British Empire. They invented racism. They made it about race because what was different about the Africans and the Europeans, the British, was their skin tone. And they made everything about your skin tone. And we suffer from that to this day. Therefore, the United States of America and the United Kingdom, of which the Queen ruled over for 70 years, go hand in hand in their ideas about race, class, and bloodlines. So race was at the center of everything at the very beginning of this country. You started out as a white man, race. Then you built wealth, class, through the slave system. And through that slave system, you built the southern aristocratic bloodline. And those people are still ruling in this country today, Mitch McConnell being one of them and admitted his family owned slaves. And as you know, Mitch McConnell is the majority leader of the House of Senate in the United States Congress. And if you were to look at the wealthy white people in this country who have generational wealth, who have been wealthy for some time, that wealth was built on the slave system. So the slave system is still working in America. It built wealth and it built class and it built bloodlines. And the reason this was so awful for black people is because a lot of this country was established by criminals. They emptied out those jails over in England and sent those derelicts and the rejects and the people they wanted out of their society to the colony. 
They sent them to the United States, especially in these southern states that weren't developed first. Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, criminals established this, these, these areas. But they got their hands on some slaves and they built their wealth and they became somebody. And the worst of the white person was better than the best of the black people. There was never a way to be equal. And that has done damage to us that has not been repaired to this day. And all of this started with that British Empire with those kings and queens and the exploitation of Africa and African people. This is what you need to know about the British royal family and Queen Elizabeth II. Even as the world grieves her and bestows accolades of honor, admiration, and respect on her. So the British royal family birthed into the world the idea that one race of people is superior over the others. And that one race is the race that they're a part of. The Caucasian, the Anglo-Saxons, whatever you want to call them, we normally call them white people. They advanced the idea that white people are superior to everybody else. This started with the British. Now this is the system that she has presided over and this is the system that she perpetuates. I'm going to be bold enough to say that Queen Elizabeth II and the British royal family and others like them have hindered the world from making any real progress towards racial equality, racial acceptance, everybody accepting themselves as they are, as, a, as children of the Most High God and being who they're supposed to be as opposed to, you're not like me so there's something wrong with you because they have used their power their armies, their missionaries, everything at their disposal to perpetuate the idea that if you're not like me, something is wrong with you. And there are those who say that this system of white supremacy has been bold enough to go into countries of people of color and put up a white Jesus and have people worshiping white Jesus and white people instead of the true and living God. So this system of white supremacy goes into nations of people of color and convinces the people that they are more civilized than the people living in the area. That they know more, that their way is better than the people's own ways. And through manipulation, indoctrination, and brainwashing, they convince the people to hate themselves and to love them. And that whatever they do is right and better than whatever the people do. Things that actually work for them. Destroying your good stuff that works for you in favor of what they say is better for you. This is indoctrination, it's brainwashing, and it's manipulation. Most, And it's all done for money and power and control over other human beings. What African Americans need to know about Queen Elizabeth II is that the system that they have imposed on the world is intentional. It is a system in which it keeps them in power. It keeps them wealthy and it keeps the rest of us working to stay ahead and worshiping them as if they were gods as in curtsying and bowing and calling them your majesty and elevating them above other people. Africans and African Americans have paid a serious price in blood, sweat, tears, heartache, and tragedy for that British royal family to exist and for it to continue to exist and exalt itself over us and other people of color. So indeed, there is a price and a very, very heavy price that has been paid for the elevation of of the British royal family, including Queen Elizabeth II. I honestly don't know what good they have done in the world that they didn't get more out of it than the people that they were supposed to be helping. I don't know what they do to uplift humanity or what they do to truly advance the cause of civilization. 
What I do know is that they have benefited greatly from Africa and African people. So as the world grieves Queen Elizabeth II, I think it's a good time for African Americans to take a look at her life and to see how she and her ancestors have shaped the events in world history, especially history that relates to us. Queen Elizabeth pledged to serve her people, whether her life was short or long, for the entirety of her life. And she did that. She served. She kept the status quo in place. They lost their colonies, but they gained the commonwealth, which means that they still exert power and influence and control over black people and many brown people. So she held up her end of the bargain. What's often said about Queen Elizabeth II is that she never set a foot wrong. She never did anything wrong. She never did anything to mess up what they had gained. So that you can say about her. And we can take a page out of her book. Anybody can take a page out of her book. Her motto and her life was, do no damage. And she didn't do any damage. They didn't lose anything. Anybody who thought they got away from that commonwealth, they found a way to rope them back in. They used their trading partners like the United States, Japan, Canada, anybody that they had to use, they would use to whip those countries back in line. Because let's remember, Africa is the prize. It is the wealthiest of all of the continents. Make no mistake about that. So she was a real queen presiding over the British Parliament, riding around in those buggies, living in those huge palaces that was paid for through the blood, sweat, and tears of other people. This is what we need to know about Queen Elizabeth II and what she represents. She represents the destruction of us and our families. And we look at the pictures of these people who came through this system, how pitiful they looked, how sad they looked, how they didn't helpless, took away their humanity and imposed brutality on them. I don't think we should look away. I don't think we should look away and say, I don't care about that. I think we should pay attention to all of the pomp and circumstance all of the accolades and all the wonderful things that people are going to say about this woman. As they say that, we need to think about this woman and her bloodline, which goes back at least to the first Queen Elizabeth, and think about the impact that what these people stand for and what they have done have had on us and our lives. Because everything that has happened to us, they have been a part of it. She and her ancestors have been a part of everything that has happened to us. So as they go through this grieving process, I think we should go through this process with the understanding that this is what happened to us. Okay, so thank you for listening. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Share the video. And as always, have a great day.